Hello everyone, my name is Kashik Kotaga. Welcome to this course on SOAP Web Services in Java. When we talk about web services in general, there are primarily two different types of web services. You have one type called as SOAP Web Service, and you have another type called as REST Web Service. SOAP is the older of the two. REST is a new entry into the web service world, but both of them are in use and both are popular. In this tutorial series, I'm going to be focusing on the SOAP web service, and I'll have a different series later which covers REST. So in the Java world, there are two different specifications. So there is a specification for SOAP web services called JAX-WS, and there's a specification for REST, which is jax RS, right? So this course is going to be about this one. So, so what is a web service, first of all? A web service is, to put it very simply, a service that's made available over the web. I know you'd have never guessed that one, right? But that's pretty simply what a web service is. It's basically a service that's made available over the network and it's accessed over the network. Well, you might think, well, isn't everything online a web service then? because everything you access online is a service that's provided over the network, right? So you go to a social media website, so you use that service to interact with your friends. You go to an e-commerce website, you use that service to purchase products. So can we call them as web services? Well, the thing is, the difference between a standard website and a web service is that a website is meant for human consumption while a web service is meant for code consumption or application level consumption. Let me explain that with an example. Let's say you're writing some code for an e-commerce application and you've written a business service to get the list of products. So let's say you have written a class with a method called get products. This is your method and you have created a business service for it. Now, this business service is deployed on your application server. Let's say this is your app server, which hosts the other parts of the application, could be other services, other pieces of code. And all these other classes and other pieces of code are now free to call this method to get the list of products. Right, so this since this is deployed on the same app server, it's a simple Java method call. So any of these classes can use this functionality by calling this method, right? Now let's say you want to give this uh, feature, you know, you want to provide this feature to your users. So you could have like an MVC module that makes this available as a web application. So the users could actually enter a URL and see the list of products on their web browser, right? So you show the list of products, but there's actually making a call to this get products. So the MVC module probably has a call to get products and it shows uh, the products in a nice HTML you know, format. So now what you've done is you have essentially created a web application, right? So this is a web application because any user can use this application to show and to see the list of products. Now, let's say you have a friend, a fellow developer, who comes to you and says, hey, I have this really cool application that I'm working on, right? So this is your friend's app server. And your friend has got this really cool application that's deployed on the app server. And your friend says, hey, I want to call your get products method and show the list of all of your products in my application, right? So this is a completely different application server and your friend wants to make a call to your business service, get products. Would it be possible? Well, one way we could achieve this is by packaging your business service into a jar file, right? And handing this jar file to your friend. So what your friend does is takes your 
business service as a jar file and deploys it on the app server, on his app server. And then his application makes a call to this method, which is in the jar file. So there is a get products call. And then the functionality, the code is in the jar file. Would this work? Well, it probably might not work because this get product is probably making a call to a database, which has the list of products. And this database is hosted along with the app server on your infrastructure, right? So this, your friend has a completely different app server and probably has a completely different database, right? This probably will not have the list of products that your friend is actually interested in. That data is over here, right? So that might not work. And the second disadvantage of this way is, let's say you update your Git products business service. Let's say you create a version two. Now, what would you need to do to update it over here? What you would probably have to do is repackage this as a new jar file and hand over the new jar file to your friend. And then your friend has to do a build, redeploy, and then only then will that new functionality be available in your friend's app server, right? So this probably might not work. What would be really ideal is if the get products call, which your friend is doing, could directly call this get products, which is of a business service that's deployed on your app server, right? If this could directly call the instance that's deployed on your app server, that would be really the best because this instance has access to the data right? This instance always gets updated with your new versions. And this app would always have the latest list of products. Would this kind of a direct call work? Well, it works by using a web service. So that's essentially what a web service does. It allows two different machines, two different pieces of code, two different applications running on two different servers to be able to talk to each other. So this could be app server one, and this is app server two. So this is an application, and this is a completely different application. So these two applications can talk to each other over the network. So they're two different machines, right? App Server 1 is probably some different physical hardware and App Server 2 is probably a different physical hardware. It could be somewhere else in the world, but they are connected over the network. They have to be connected over the network. And the applications which are deployed on these two app servers can talk to each other, right? They can call methods of each other over the network by using web service technology. So if you have a specific method in this application that you want a different application to use, all you need to do is configure this as a web service. And then you can have this application call this method directly at execution time. And of course, if you want to make this a web service as well, then this application can call this so they can, so they can actually call methods of each other mutually. The other advantage of using web services is it's actually standard technology. It's not really specific to Java. You can write web services in a whole lot of different technologies. For example, you can write a web service in .NET. You can write a web service in Python or C++, right? And the best part about the web service standard is what's called as interoperability. What it means is, let's say you've written a web service. Say this is a web service that's written in Java, right? the code that runs behind the web service is actually Java code. And now let's say this is actually a .NET application that also has a web service, right? So what the web service technology allows you to do is a Java code, a Java piece of code can actually call a .NET web service and a .NET piece of code can actually call a Java web service. Okay, and it just doesn't have to be a web service. Now, let's say you have an application that's written in C++. It's not a web service. It's a simple application that's written in C++. You can actually have this C++ application call a Java web service or a .NET web service. Okay, and they can actually 
call methods and return return types during execution time, right? So tell me if this doesn't blow your mind. You can actually have different applications written in different technologies that communicate with each other during execution time. They can call each other's methods. And I believe this is really cool. And what this actually lets us do is you can actually pick and choose technologies that you want to use. Say you have a set of business services that are better implemented in C++. Well, you can go ahead and write it in C++ and expose it as a web service. And then a Java application can use it, right? So this is one of the strengths of web service. It's kind of a standard and you can have, uh, you can implement it in any technology and then different uh, applications written in different technologies can use each other's web services. Okay, so this is kind of like a high level overview of web services. We haven't talked a lot about the details. Uh, in the next tutorial, I will talk about some of the terminologies uh, involving web services. The whole web service technology comes with its own set of terms and terminologies. We'll try to understand that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.